What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I am your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Jones. Brian, Blade is a subject that we have been talking about for some time, ever since it was announced, ever since um, that awkward announcement <laughs> of Mahershala Ali being... Uh, the one casted as Blade. And it's been in shambles ever since. Nothing good in terms of... The only exciting part of this whole thing, Brian, is that we know a Blade is coming. <laughs> but other the, other the details of it have been horrific as to what we will get. I had an interesting conversation with Tracy the other day, Brian, and he's saying Hershla Ali is feeling the pressure and he's doing whatever it takes to get this movie done because he realized what he put himself in, Brian. He called Kevin Feige. He said, I'm the guy to do this. I want to do this. He cannot afford now to step away from this role, Brian, and have someone take over. We have not talked writer's strike as much, but mm -hmm. this is one of, you know, this is the first writer's strike, I believe, since 2008, 2009. Um, and it, it has all the makings of a protracted stoppage simply because one of the core issues is how to properly compensate writers in the streaming era. The conventional formulas for how writers got paid has been completely upended by the fact that, you know, when you binge shows, when it's impossible to no know ratings, it's just muddying like how, what exactly the contribution is from a monetary perspective and how do you reflect that in the contract. So this could be take a while. Yeah, yeah. But I think what you're getting at, which I agree with the second I saw this headline, is that I think the writer's strike will be a very convenient excuse in certain cases to shut down troubled projects at various studios. Mm -hmm. And they could say, well, you know, with the strike, we just, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't wait and we had to move on and scheduling conflicts and blah, 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 blah. And you got the air cover, but underneath what you have is a doomed project mm -hmm. that never gets off the ground and sees the light of day. And with every report, this Marsha Ali blade looks closer and closer to that, to me. It wouldn't, we have talked about the schedule at Disney and Bob Iger said it needs to spread out. There probably needs to be some pruning. I think the odds of this movie ever making it in of this version of the blade movie, ever making it to the big screen are going down to where I, I would probably tell you it's 50, 50 at best that we ever see this. I think Brian, that despite the efforts being made to get this movie off the ground, these efforts will still go uh, no further uh, than pre-production. I just don't think there was a lot of confidence in this movie being successful, not at, forget about being made successful, because that's what that right now. They, before, make it. Don't worry about it. Right now, it's like yo, we need to put out good movies, or else uh, the house we built is gonna fall. And so, this may Brian take a a, a back seat and. Unfortunately, this again, despite the, the efforts being done behind the scenes to trying to get this movie up and running, I don't think it makes it. And this is, a, you know, a perfect opportunity to pull the plug. And that is going to be a, 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 a met with a, a big a disappointment from the yes. fans. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I think to your point, at the end of the day, profits drive decisions. And this movie has already gone through two directors. This movie has already gone through now, I believe three writers, because there was a new writer coming in for a script doctor right before the strike hit. It's already gone through two production shutdowns. So one prior when they 
fired the director and changed the script and went, you know, and then now with the strike, they've shut down the production as well. And that, so that, which is interesting because the rules around the strike are if you have a finished script, you are allowed to keep shooting. So weirdly, Superman Legacy can continue pre-production work because James Gunn got the first draft into the studio before the strike. And he's in the weird spot of being both writer and director. So he's allowed to act as the director. He's not allowed to revise his existing draft. That's technically the rules of the strike. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they shut Blade down kind of tells you they still didn't have a working draft script to use. If they did, they are probably moving forward in a, in a greater fashion. And my point to you is like, when this project got announced and it seemed like it was gearing up, what was your realistic box office expectation if we got a good Blade movie? Realistic box It's not a, because this is not a billion dollar out of the gate type of character. I say three to four. Okay, so three to four, which I agree with. So three to four means you cannot spend total more than about 150 to 175 million dollars on this and when you start firing directors and changing writers and having delays and product guess what happens to your budget blows up and that's why i feel like disney will look at this and say our margins on this are pretty tight as it is and if this these numbers start getting to a place where look to put in the VFX we need, to put in the action sequence we need, to make this good, if that's going to take this project to like 200, 225, 250 with marketing, it's not making money. And if it's not, if they know it's not making money, are we sure they're going to make it in the first place? Yeah. I'd get James and uh, Christopher Nolan to do this film, use practical effects, make it, make the movie look dope. But, I don't know, man. I, I just don't have any faith in this movie being released this, again despite the conversations I have with people really wanting this movie to work and people working on it in some capacity at the end of the day I, don't, I, I just don't see it happening I also think too I mean like as always with these things you're trying to build a franchise and you're trying to build connectivity and so I do think at some point, like Mahershala Ali has obviously won two Oscars. Yeah, I get it. He's in pretty deep on this, you know, but he's he's 50 now already. Yeah. And so, like, you think back to, like, you know, just to put it in perspective, Wesley Snipes today is 60. And he could still find you. But I'm just saying, so Wesley Snipes is 10 years older than Mahershala Ali right now. Wesley Snipes first played Blade in 1998. Yeah. So think about that for a second when you're like, Wesley Snipes was 35 when he when he became the Daywalker. Yeah. So how many appearances can Marshall Ali realistically make starting at age 50 if this first movie doesn't come out till he's like 51 or 52? This is just Kevin not being able to say no. He got bullied. <laughs> and and yeah, yeah. Are we calling it, Brian? Are we calling it that this movie is is done? I'm not totally prepared to do that, but I would just say, like, I'm down to 50 50. I'm down to 50 50, which is like, considering they have announced this and the amount of resources they have sunk into it, like, I, this would be a first that we have not had an MCU project taken off. Actually, it's not, but it's furthest along. Uh, if you remember, Inhumans was supposed to be a film. If you go back, there's a phase where yeah, you yeah, can yeah, find yeah. it as a movie. Yes. And then it becomes that ill fated, disastrous TV miniseries instead. Yes. That's the only other project that literally, I think, got wiped off the board and then turned into something awful yeah. as a plan B. They can't do that with Blade, man. They can't. Like, if this thing shows up as like a Disney Plus special that just stinks, like, I, I don't want no, that. No, if they do. I'd that. rather start over and wait a couple years with a new, younger actor. Yeah, I, I I think I'm telling you, man. Kevin needs an enforcer to come in and be like, "No, I don't think this is a good idea." Ruffalo, you gotta go. You know, and uh, he doesn't have that. Kevi, Ke Kevin, uh, he, he just says yes. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, you're right. He, he, yeah, exactly. He he needs he needs someone outside the parliament brought in to be his conciliary to basically 
not tell him don't get the stars in your eyes <laughs> don't be don't be starstruck by these people who are now you know looking looking for that bag from you yeah like, man stick to what got you here exactly exactly stick to what got you here and he has fallen so far off of the rail brian that i don't know brian if this can recover guardians of the galaxy was just a taste of what we have been missing can that be with the new breed of directors can that be reinvigorated by these new guys so far it has proven that it cannot be so far for phase four we haven't i mean i mean like you literally we, we we've talked we've harped on the fact that nobody cares about the current lineup of avengers and quite honestly very few of those characters have given you reason to i mean it says something that quite honestly the most dynamic reliable I would argue known quantity of who could be a potential Avenger at this point is Tom Hiddleston as Loki. This version of Loki, which is clearly more heroic than the first. Like, that's where we're at. But, and then you layer on the Jonathan Majors uncertainty. So you go from, we had hero problems to now we might lose our superstar in the making villain. You got nothing, man. This this multiversal saga is dead. Like, it's just not. It's not gonna get there. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just. Like if, you, if they recast, which we'll see. Like I heard the, you know, they they started saying like he, I think he's facing a year in prison or you know plus three years probation or something like that. They, they, you know, the charges getting more real and that's so like we'll see. Maybe it gets settled. Maybe the charges get dropped. There's always a chance of that. But yeah. you know, if can Marvel it's... afford to wait? No, no. That, that so from what I've heard, Brian, and and the rumors is that they're they're making the preparations to, to to move forward and move on, and I think that is the right decision. They just can't wait. He, he's come. He's he, he still comes with baggage. Yeah, this is gonna be a rebuilding stage for him again. Incredible performances and him being on good behavior, so that he can rebuild his career again. And some people don't get a chance to really come back from from strangulation. You don't want that word next to you. No. So, yeah, it's unfortunate, but uh, the MCU has to move on. And I think there are some possible candidates out there. Right, this 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 a uh, rumor or this talk of getting. Uh, Chad Wookie, what what's his name? Uh, the actor who played the High Evolutionary. Yeah, which, uh, that guy to to play Kang, and it's like, no man, come on, guys, guys. What, bro? What are you talking about, man? Come on, be Not reasonable. Right. It's like, come on. He, I mean, having just seen him on screen, you can't switch him into that role right now. Stop it. John Boyega is the guy to get if you, and you're probably gonna have to pay him a lot because of stuff that they pulled with him in Disney, in Star Wars. But he's the only viable other candidate I think is capable of pulling this off. Brian, they can't just put anybody in there. And if they if they just get somebody else that can act, I don't care if he's white or black. So here's another question with that because so we know, we know. Secret Invasion's coming in June. We think Loki's coming by the end of the summer, but like, is this now problematic? Because obviously Jonathan Majors is featured in the second season of Loki and it's done, it's in the can. It's totally, yeah, 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 like, yeah. can they just put that out with no, or, I mean, they can't reshoot it. That That's not possible, but clearly that this, season of television is meant to connect to the broader universe like it's a little sticky like it, the longer this like in some ways i would have been like if it's in the can they should have released it already to kind of just get it on the board and get it out before people were like wait we got it like what if this thing comes out in a couple months and he's you know being sent he's he's found guilty like that's a tough look yeah it's, it's just hard to imagine that they would just not put it out and they just scrap everything I think it has to come out at this point. I'm just saying, like, you know, promotion. Like, it, you know, it, it, it gets it's, tricky. Yeah. 
he's supposed to be freak. he's supposed to be playing multiple variants so yeah. it, i mean and the, the 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 bad side of it like what if he's fantastic <laughs> Well, you know he's going to be fantastic because he's crushed it at every turn. That's not the issue. He's yeah, brilliant. Yeah. He's a brilliant actor. That's not the issue. But then, like, it goes back to, okay, so, like, you have that in flux. And there's just nothing on the board where you're like, but that's it. But, here it is. But it is an issue, Brian, if he's fantastic and it's like, and you're talking about replacing him. Yes. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll draw attention to, like, how irreplaceable he actually is, right? Marvel bet the house literally on this guy. There's one guy. Even more so than they ever did in phase one, two, and three. Yeah. Because before but then they don't have that thing is they don't have a back, they don't have another, they don't have a backup project or storyline where they're like, you know, Guardians 3 was really the last sort of like known quantity, not really connected, you know, can get us back on track. Like, I'm telling you, like, look at the calendar. It's like it's not the Marvels. <sighs> Is not the Thunderbolt. I predict the Marvels when we review it and talk about it is going to be one of our highest shows. Go ahead. And like, which kind of brings you back to like, can Captain America: New World Order? We're interested in it, but can that rise to the occasion and really be, you know, in the category of Civil War and Winter Soldier? Like, that's what they need. That's the yeah. only project. Like, Fantastic Four is not far enough along, and I haven't tried anything that makes me feel like I'm I'm banking on that to be. The savior. So although, that's all although, although the cast looks pretty good, Brian. I heard I've seen the rumors on that. That's okay, but like we're too far away from that to feel like, hey, it's yeah, you know, it's a lock and it's it's something we can count on. And we've seen you know, we've seen Fantastic Fantastic Four is fighting an uphill battle because of the failures of the prior versions of it. So yeah. it's, it's slim pickings for the MCU right now to really get back on track. And then you get uh, the A2 Boutte, Chris Evans is like, I don't, I ain't trying to come back. Scott Joe, it's got Scarlett Johansson. Well, nobody wants to be on the ship when it's sinking. <laughs> but they're distancing themselves, like you know, there's yeah. like there's no chance I can come back, even for Secret Wars, where you would expect them to come back. You know, so if you can't get them back, yeah. it sounds like Secret Wars is gonna cost like a billion dollars to make. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's gonna have to get paid. You know, yeah. it seems like they're gonna have to go to James Cameron around and make a billion dollar film, literally, and and break even with another two, three billion. I don't know. Don't get me started. By the way, if you, if, if you imagine James Cameron directing an Avengers movie, oh, that would be the best looking. <laughs> that movie, that movie could make five billion dollars at the box office. <laughs> if you gave James Cameron unlimited budget and said, "Go make Avengers: Secret Wars." Oh my God! Oh yeah, I think he would just probably just make two movies for that amount. But that would be the best looking comic book movie ever. Yeah, but James Cameron <laughs> is too much of a control freak. Nah, it's not gonna happen. But, <laughs> yeah. but anyway, yeah, just it's just it's really rough right now. I think out there at the end because like I look back on it and it's like we just came through the stretch where you would have said it's most reliable, right? Like Wakanda Forever. We were banking on Quantum Mania yeah. being something big. And then you're like, okay, Guardians 3 is what it is, but you know the floor is really high. And it mm. turned out to be quite good. Yeah. Now you're into the. Mm. Now, mm. That, and what's next? And the, the, the only thing we got next is the Marvels, mm. <laughs> yeah. which is, uh, oh man, the Marvels, that's going to be headline after headline for like a week or two. Short the stock. Anyway. Um. Brian, anything else before we move on? Before we, uh... I think, I think, I think that's it. But yeah, the writer strike. We'll probably talk about it more as we go forward because a lot of things are being are being put in flux because of this. But yes, like I said, I think you will see some projects very quietly, maybe not so quietly, put out the pasture. And, and we haven't heard anything about the Black Knight, right? Oh no, that I think that that, that post credit scene in Eternals <laughs> good. has kind of been disowned it's, at this I point. I think we can. Uh, we should have like a, a a basket of garbage, right? It's gonna be garbage uh, or, or lost um, ideas. Clea is gonna be in there. Uh, that 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 end credit scene, Blade. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that's uh, not gonna be kid, made. Kid, kid, kid Harrington's walking around telling people that was that was the life model decoy of Kid <laughs> Harrington in that movie. What me? What me? I'm doing my John Snow spinoff. Me? <laughs> oh man. Damn, it's unfortunate. But uh, this just goes to show you how far 
the MCU has, has, has come down from its height of where it was. And we always felt that coming. Um, but it, they certainly gave us hope with the, the other films that came out after Endgame with No Way Home. Um, and then it just all went down and after that. Uh, but the DCU was on its way, Brian. The, the, I'm the, telling the, you, like I'm just saying, the like, scales will I'm tip. Just, you just look ahead. You're like, okay, so if I'm drafting, I can make a strong case that the top that if you're just drafting for profitability combined with entertainment, Joker two, Superman Legacy, the Batman Part two. Are you taking? Is there is is there a Marvel project you take over any of those? Now I'm not the biggest Joker fan, but I'm just yeah. saying for reliability to yeah. make money. To make money, yes. Yeah, those three are probably above anything Marvel's got, and it's not only as close. Yeah. Right yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. That year, Marvel has to steer clear unless you got a plan. If you don't have a plan to compete, don't waste your time. This take that time to regroup, go back to one of your retreats or find another place where you can go and really sit down and decide what's the future gonna be like because it it's not what the plan is not the route that you're going in now. And I don't know how you recover, Brian. The simplest thing for me, Brian, go on hiatus, reboot everything. The easiest thing they would have done is reboot after Endgame, right? Because why we need to, I mean, just start a new saga of something else, a new storyline. Well, I think that's what they were trying to do, right? They were kind of, we, we applauded their experimentation early on because they were trying some different things, but- They went out the deep end, they kept going. But it was, they started to compound mistakes, right? Yeah. We talked, like we started, you know, compounded sloppy VFX with too much kind of celebrity reliance with Got too away, much got away from you know core basics blocking and tackling on building up heroes and building up storytelling they got away from the element that really the fundamentals of how this works so who do you blame jpeg for that for wanting more They're well not- everyone everyone shares right obviously they made victoria alonzo the fall person but look i mean the jpeg era obviously is going to be viewed pretty harshly by history on many fronts mm-hmm. But you have to blame Kevin for some of it. And you could and you can make your excuses, which we talked about about him being stretched too thin. And I do think there's something to that. Mm-hmm. Because he is a very as we know, his gift as a producer is having that vision and that touch to kind of know when to go big or go small. And yeah. when you're not as close to every project, that's impossible. So you have to lay blame at his feet for being too far away. You have to lay blame at the feet of the parliament who you know, I don't think it's a surprise that they can't be Kevin Feige, but clearly that group of producers, when given a lead role, hasn't been as successful at diagnosing what they need. Yeah. I think you can blame, you know, you could probably throw some blame and it's a little touchy subject, but like, you know, some of Disney's, like, so one of the things that's come out post the Alonzo departure is this whole, you know, I don't want to get into a Disney woke discussion, but this idea of, there are international markets that do not show or support films that depict certain characterizations. Okay. Yeah. That's fact. Yeah. Victoria Alonso's stance apparently was, I will staunchly refuse to edit out anything to appease an, in, an international market that feels that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that runs straight into the conflict of Disney saying, yeah, but we need the money. <laughs> like, right. I'm just, I think that's the reality. Like, we're losing a hundred million or fifty million a box office globally every time you do that. Can you tone it down? And if you believe the the rumor mill post, it, her answer was always no. So that inner conflict is also something you have to blame to some extent because it it created storytelling choices that cost dollars. Money. Right, it yeah. did. Like that's just, so a lot of blame to go around. And you're right. I almost wonder. Like I don't think they'll do it. But I would argue it is more damaging to force feed the audience a bad ending to the multiversal saga and have those movies bomb than it is to literally just curtains it. Like if you're gonna, instead of replacing Jonathan Majors, what if you use that as an excuse to say, we can't do this. We're just gonna stop and we're gonna start with a new path. 
is that so bad to the audience if they did that versus we're going to recast we're going to give you weaker movies with weaker heroes and now we've got as i'm now predicting kang dynasty making south of a billion dollars yeah. which is not acceptable that's very yeah. damaging yeah an avengers movie making less than a billion dollars is just it's just unheard of it's just unheard of uh but it seems like we're heading that route if we continue on this path which seems like there is we, there is no there is no i don't think path to not continue because they can't afford not to continue so we're gonna get perhaps more of uncertainty with these films and and it is what it is but uh let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh these this situation um damn well, i forgot what we were talking about because we talked about so many other things what, what, oh we, well, we started on blade and now we're ah, to like yeah let us know what you guys think of the whole blade situation man uh i know many of you are wanting this movie to come out uh but it would you rather not see a bad blade movie is that the right question would you rather not see a, bl a bad bloody movie i'd rather not see it yeah i agree uh but it's because it's looking all it's it, if you go down the trail of looking at the problems that it's had if this movie is good it'll be remarkable it'll be the talk of the town if they can if they can pull this one off but mahershala ali mahershala ali's name is written all over this Let's see what happens. Um, hit that like and subscribe button. Share it with your friends. Comment in the comment section below. And we will see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. The show goes on! Yeah!